Hello everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So, EVs, a lot of people tend to believe that these are quite modern and they're a thing of our time. But what if I told you that commercially available EVs existed over a hundred years ago? And what if I told you that they had a range of up to around 80 miles, they had a top speed of anywhere between 22 to 25 miles an hour? I don't know, when I say that out loud, I almost don't believe it, but there was a company called Detroit Electric Motor Car and they did exactly that. The Detroit Electric Motor Car was actually introduced in the early 20th century. It was a marvel of engineering and its silent operation, lack of emissions and smooth ride made it a very popular choice among the well-do individuals with a top speed of around 20 to 25 miles an hour and a range of up to 80 miles on a single charge. Apparently, this would have been perfect for urban commuti commuting. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Unlike today's cars with automatic starters, other cars that were powered by gasoline required manual hand cranking to start the engine. Whilst this was acceptable for the time, it definitely did have its limitations. Cranking the engine was physically demanding and sometimes even dangerous due to the backfires and kickbacks. This inconvenience discouraged many potential buyers, especially women, from actually considering a gasoline car. So during the winter of 1908, a friend of the CEO of Cadillac, which is his name was Brian Carter, was actually killed whilst trying to attempt to start a Cadillac automobile for a stranded motorist in Detroit, Michigan. The driver actually forgot to adjust the spark and the motor backfired, causing the crank handle to strike and break Carter's jaw. And due to the lack of uh, medicine during the early 20th century, he died that year. Carter's death allegedly made the CEO of, of Cadillac that he would get rid of the hand crank starter. So in the early 1910s, when Charles F. Kettering introduced a new invention, the electric starter motor, this device eliminated the need for hand cranking and made starting an internal combustion engine effortless. Suddenly, the gasoline-powered cars become much more accessible to a much broader audience as the starter motor eliminated the physical challenges and the safety concerns associated with hand cranking. And this was all due to Carter dying whilst trying to start a Cadillac. As the popularity of gasoline cars equipped with starter motors surged, the Detroit electric motor car began facing stiff competition. Gasoline cars were now more convenient to start, had longer ranges, and even started gaining more speed. And this led to a decline in the demand of electric cars, including Detroit Electric. Despite its initial success and notable advantages, the Detroit Electric motor car struggled to maintain its market share by the 1920s. The automobile industry has shifted to focus towards gasoline powered vehicles with starter motors and the last Detroit Electric car rolled off the assembly line in 1939, making this an end of an era. The story of Detroit Electric motor car teaches us a valuable lesson about the impact of innovation and competition in the automotive industry. Whilst the electric car's early success was remarkable, the invention of the starter motor transformed the landscape, favoring the convenience and the performance of gasoline powered vehicles. It's a reminder that even the most promising inventions can face unexpected challenges and changes that shape the course of history. The rise and fall of the Detroit electric motor car is a tale of innovation, competition and evolution in the automotive world. And I suppose if certain circumstances wouldn't have happened, who knows what we could be driving around in. It could be all EVs, or we could still be in our gasoline powered cars just like we are now. And of course, it seems like that everything becomes a bit of a fashion trend. Whatever's easiest, whatever's more convenient will become the way of it. And I suppose I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing, but I do think it's very interesting that even over a hundred years ago, we had real viable EVs. Things that can do up to 25 miles an hour, that had a range of 80 to 100 miles, which can even compete with some electric vehicles that are coming out even today. And I do think that is absolutely, well, really crazy in fact. But I suppose with that being said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or suggestions, Please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have the most fantastic day and I will see you later.